good morning students today we are going to discuss about the class amphibia and class reptilia so if we look at the classification phylum chordata subphylum vertebrata so in vertebrata division gnathostomata after that this is super class pisces and tetrapoda so in tetrapoda the super class tetrapoda we are having four classes so whatever we are discussing the classes these are all living class only so in that first one is amphibia once again just reminding you the classification reptilia apes and mammalia so the four classes if you see there are the super class tetrapoda so in the name only it is there tetrapoda tetra means four poda legs with four limbs so the organisms with four limbs so one pair of four limbs one pair of hind limbs so the organism with four number of limbs we are placing under the super class tetrapoda so in that the first class is here the level of classification is class level so in that the first class is amphibia today we are going to discuss it first class amphibia so if you look into the name amphibia amphibia amphi means dual so here the name if you see two root words amphi which means dual dia or by the word means life here what is the dual life these things you know already previously so here the dual life the name indicating so these organisms live in two habitats two different habitats they continue their life in two different habitats here the habitats mean the place where they are living so if you look into the amphibians class all the organisms if you see their lifestyle so they are living in water as usual land so the amphibians are the organisms which have two different habitats so aquatic as usual terrestrial single organism only is living in both aquatic form and the terrestrial next thing and the amphibians are the first organisms to walk on the land remember these are the first organisms to walk on land so if you see then actually their early stages of life is in the water only but later of development these are the first organisms to walk on the land so habitat you know already so based on the habitat only their name came amphibia dual life dual life means to have their surviving in two different habitats next body form generally whenever you remember this amphibians you have to remember the examples like frogs toads tree frogs each three of us there are few examples given in a ncrt textbook if you see so the classical example always we remember frogs so generally frogs if you see so they used to live near the water bodies you cannot find amphibians in the desert land or in the extreme conditions so always wherever the water source is there so the availability of water source there only these amphibians you can find 
And one more thing is amphibians, if you see, all the forms are freshwater forms. You cannot find amphibians in the sea water or marine water. Next, body form. How this body is? If you look into the frog, generally the body is divided into head, trunk, and some of the amphibians are having tail. Some of them are having tail, but some of the organisms does not have tail. So, you might think in the adult frog there is no tail, but in the early stage of development, when there is a tadpole larva stage, in such condition, you can observe the presence of tail. So, any of the developmental stage, the tail is present. Next, immediately the consumer, whatever the next point is given, some of the amphibians, generally these are under tetrapoda, tetrapoda superclass. So, there is a definite character, in what we discussed earlier, two pairs of limbs. But here, if you see this amphibia, some of the organisms are exceptional case. In this, some of the organisms are without any limbs, generally with limbs, generally amphibians are with limbs, one exception case is there, each office limbless amphibian, if you see this amphibian is limbless amphibian, so without any limbs. So this is the case which belongs to the family if you see a poda. A poda means a poda means without any limbs. So this is the brief description about the body form. Next, if you see the epidermis, amphibians. So generally they used to live near the water bodies. So generally their skin is moist and without scales. If you see in the early ancestor species, there are kinds of, there is kinds of scales. But if you see in the amphibians, skin is without scales, without scales and moisty. So this moisture nature of the skin is providing the gases exchange capacity to the organism. So in amphibians you can find the cutaneous respiration. Cutaneous respiration means exchanging the gases through the skin. So generally the amphibian skin is moisture in nature and without scales. This moisture is because of the glands beneath the skin layer. So which continuously secret the mucus. Next, general physiological characters, if you see the digestion. So, complete digestive system only, no need to mention. Here, the important thing is, whatever the digestive system is there, that the digestive system ending, the terminus, anus is opening into the common opening called cloaca. So, the cloaca is the common opening for both the digestive system reproductive system and urinary tract. So the generally the digestive system is opening into the day, common opening called cloaca. Next important thing is respiration. If you see the respiration very important. So here three types of respiration you can find. So first one is branchial respiration. Second one is cutaneous respiration and the third one is pulmonary respiration. So the branchial respiration means exchange of gases through the gills. So in the early stage of life you can see external gills. So there is an exchange of gases with gills. Next, cutaneous 
amphibian skin is moist and always kept with moist so that enables the exchange of gases very thick skin with a vascular layers beneath the skin which provide the gases exchange next pulmonary respiration means exchange of gases with lungs so this is the main reason in the evolution the development of lungs enable them to survive on the land so gills and skin they are providing the gases exchange within the water bodies so when the with the lungs they can help in the gases exchange on land form so in the terrestrial habitat so they are having diversity of gases exchange mechanisms if you see to gills skin and lungs additional to this some of the amphibians they are having buccopharyngeal cavity gases exchange so you can find the frogs always they might be pumping gas with the mouth like this so that the buccopharyngeal cavity exchange also you can find some of the amphibians next circulation so here the circulation is closed type circulation only and the heart is with three chambers so these things you have to understand make it clear so earlier in fishes if you see the heart is having two chambers and one vent but here the heart is having three chambers circulation system or circulatory system closed type circulation as you know in the subphylum vertebrata all organs are having closed type circulation and this closed type circulation with three chambered heart so now what is happening with this three chambered heart so easily you can understand so here you can see three chambers in heart auricles atria and ventricle you see so here the blood circulation is incomplete double circulation because what are the oxygenated and deoxygenated blood from the lungs generally lungs or the skin or the gills so the blood is what are the gases exchange is happening in the respiratory organs it is carried separately so one said oxygenated deoxygenated blood but whenever the pumping during the pumping time both the oxygenated and deoxygenated blood will become mixed so because of this reason it is not getting separate is the whatever the oxygenated and deoxygenated blood is not pumping separately so because of this reason we can say it is having incomplete double circulation later in the amphibian uh, sorry in the class mainly you can understand what is complete double circulation what is incomplete double circulation so don't be hurry incomplete double circulation here you have to remember three chambered heart two auricles and one ventricle that only the major point you have to remember it clearly next excretion so these organisms generally excrete urea in the adult stage excretion so generally these are excreting the urea urea is the excretory substance and the excretory organs are kidneys jab mesonephric kidneys you can see in the amphibia class kidneys are there 
So, and the excretory material is cheap excretory material. Nitrogenous excretory material is urea. So, in the adult stage, some of the larva stage, like tadpole larva, in the early stage, where it excretes ammonia because it's living in a water body. So, in larva stage, the excretory product is ammonia, whereas in the adult stage, the excretory product is urea. So, urea is cheap nitrogenous waste. Because of this excreting urea, what we are calling urico, sorry, ureo telic organisms or ureotelism. The property we say ureotelism. And the organisms are called ureotelic organisms. Next, nervous system. So in NCRT textbook, nervous system is not mentioned, but regarding sensory organs, they mention clearly. So the sensory organ, auditory sensory organ, whatever the ear and eyes they mention. So the presence of eyelids. So, first time the presence of eyelids and the even presence of the lacrimal glands are well developed in the amphibians compared to the fishes in the amphibians presence of the eyelids and what are the external ear. So, the auditory function, the ear is represented by tympanum. So here tympanum means whenever you see this word, generally you might get confused. So easily you can understand. So if you look into the human ear. So tympanum is nothing but whatever the auditory canal. So if you see the ear, external ear, whatever the part we can see, middle ear. This middle ear portion only we are saying here tympanum. So the external ear is absent. Generally, ear is just with middle ear. Directly the external, whatever the external structures are there, they are absent. Middle ear is there, so which is representing the sensory organ ears. Next thing, reproduction. So these organisms reproduce by sexually, as you know, but they are having well developed regeneration process. So later we will discuss that thing. First reproduction we will see. So sexes are separate. So male and female organs are separate in this amphibia class organisms. Sexes are separate. Unisexual organisms, dioecious condition. And here the fertilization previously we discussed why always the amphibia live near to the water bodies. First thing they are poikilothermic and second thing they require water for the reproduction aspect third one to escape from the predators these are the three main reasons if you see the amphibians always always they will live near to the water bodies so here the fertilization is external fertilization external fertilization in amphibians, if you observe, still they didn't develop the egg shell. Whatever the protective egg coat, they didn't develop. That is the main reason. So they didn't become completely terrestrial organisms. Still they are depending on the water for the fertilization and the early stages of development. So fertilization is external fertilization. So here external fertilization means you know already. So releasing the gametes in the 
into the surrounding environment, we can say the water bodies here, particularly. So, releasing the gametes, male and female gametes into water. So, where they fuse to form the zygote. And the development is indirect. Mostly, development is indirect. Example from the starting on, I am representing. So, tadpole larva. Larva stage, you can see, particularly in case of amphibians, particularly in frogs, you can see there is a larva stage. Once again, sexes are separate. They require water for the fertilization, external fertilization, and the development is indirect. These organisms, just now we said, one more thing here, if you see the external fertilization, development is indirect. After the formation of the you can say, oviparous. Here, external fertilization. So, they are just laying the female gametes, eggs into the water bodies. So, these organisms are oviparous. So, the organisms which lay eggs, we call them as oviparous. Here, the amphibians are oviparous and the development is indirect. Next, few points if you see, previously also one of the students is uh, asking in doubt session. So, poikilothermic or cold-blooded or exothermic organisms you can say. These organisms are poikilothermic or thermos. So poikilothermic means generally if you see in our body always the internal temperature is 37 degrees only. No matter whatever the external temperature whether it is a summer season or it is a winter season. Always inside our body with temperature will be 37 degrees only. So, we are having the ability to maintain the constant body temperature. But here in amphibians, if you see fishes, amphibians, up to reptiles. Keep it in mind, fishes, amphibians and reptiles. So, the only organisms, birds and mammals. So, here poikilothermic organisms means cold-blooded organisms which cannot maintain their internal constant temperature. So, like we human beings, amphibians, they cannot maintain internal body temperature. Always they have to depend on the surroundings to maintain the internal temperature, internal body temperature. So, for example, in the summer season, if you see, generally you cannot find the amphibians during daytime. So, they will go for the, what you can say, summer sleep or the, the, if they are not going for the summer sleep, they generally used to stay in, within the water body only to make their body cool. So similarly in the winter season, you can see they are generally the morning hours. They used to bask in the sunlight. So that time the temperatures are low, so they have to get the temperature from the surrounding environment. So they depend on the sunlight. So such kind of behavioral changes you can observe in the cold-blooded organisms. Here cold-blooded organisms means they cannot maintain internal body temperature, constant internal body temperature. Poikilothermic or cold-blooded organisms means they cannot maintain constant internal body temperature. Next, examples. If you look into the examples, toad, frog, tree frog, salamander, and limbless reptile. These are the five examples given in NCRT textbook. If you see the first one, Buffo is the scientific name, commonly called toad, Rana tigris, which we are calling frog. Hyla, 
which is tree frog. So tree frog means generally mostly it lives on the tree zone. Next salamandra, commonly called salamander. And the final one is in the exceptional case we discuss the amphibian without wings, it's the opus. It's the opus. Limbless amphibian. So these are the examples you can find in the NCRT textbook regarding the amphibian class. Right? Next thing we will discuss the class reptilia. So class reptilia, first name, origin of the name. If you see the reptiles, immediately you have to remember crocodiles, turtles, lizards, snakes, such kind of organisms. Amphibians, immediately you have to remember frogs, salamander, tree frog, toads, all these things. For the reptiles, you have to remember immediately in your brain their image has to come. Class reptilia. Reptilia, reptum or ripper. So these are the organisms if you see they are having creeping or crawling nature. If you see the wall lizard how it will move. So creeping nature will be there. So creeping or crawling nature. Creeping or crawling nature because of this habit. So earlier the name amphibians name came because of habitat. Here the name is coming because of habit. Habit means that is what the organism is doing. So here the walking style based on the crawling or creeping nature these organisms placed in a and placed in the resume group reptilia. So the class reptilia. If you see the first thing amphibians. So from the aquatic form Half of the lifetime they are spending on the tertial habitat. But here, these are the organisms which are what you can say the evolution, the first organisms, true terrestrial organisms. True terrestrials mean completely whatever the development, reproduction. So the complete life cycle you can see in a single habitat. True terrestrial organisms. First two terrestrial organisms are reptilia group members, reptilia class members. So previously what are the amphibians are there? For the reproduction purpose, development purpose, they have to go back to the water again. But here such kind of condition is not there. And coming to the body form. Here the body is covered with scales and the body you can see head, trunk and a tail. So body is having head. Some of the organs might be having neck also. Trunk and tail. And the body is covered with, skin is covered with scales or scouts. So, what is the difference between scale or scout? Generally, uh, if you observe the particularly the crocodile skin condition, so the skin will be the very thick and hard. So, such kind of hardness is because of scouts. Scouts means they, these are also similarly like scales only, but scales after some growth they will become dead. So, the scales have been replaced, but scouts. Unlike scales, they are not getting going to replace, they will enlarge they, because some of the internal organs, so blood supply will be there, so their development is from inside. If this is scales, their development is from, from the external only, external epidemics. But the scouts development is from the internal. So because of this reason only, some of the organisms, even tactile, what is the total shell also you see, that is also a result of scouts only. So, in case of snakes, some lizards, you can find some scales. Next, 
unlike amphibians so unlike amphibians reptiles skin if you see the skin is not like that you know without any moisture so the skin is dry the condition of the skin is dry sometimes uh, sometimes you can see clearly shiny nature also you can see because it is dry and the scales whatever the there it is reflecting the light because of the things you can see the shiny of nature of skin in reptiles particularly next so similarly like amphibians previously i told you these are also the poikilothermic or cold blooded animals class reptilia commonly we are calling reptiles these are also cold blooded animals poikilothermic next the digestive system physiological things we will see so when it is coming to the digestive system complete digestive system only and here digestive system is opening into the cloaca remember the whatever the cloaca is there in the amphibians structurally it is different here because here the cloaca is bearing reproductive organs so whatever the copulatory organs are there some of the uh, in reptilia particularly internal fertilization will happen because of that reason copulatory organs are present in the cloaca digestive system opens into cloaca the common opening for digestive tract reproductive organs and urinary tract next respiration when we are discussing these are the true first terrestrial organisms here the respiration you can see in amphibians the lungs are not that much well developed compared to reptiles here respiration is pulmonary respiration so pulmonary respiration means the gases exchange is happening with well developed lungs and some of the reptiles particularly exceptional case so uh, what you can say some reptiles they are living in water bodies particularly if you see turtles so the turtles which are living in the water bodies the turtles are having cloacal gaseous exchange so it anyway, is which is not there in ncert forget to put it guys so, commonly the respiration is pulmonary respiration so well developed lungs you can see compared to amphibians next circulation here in class reptilia if you see earlier two chamber heart in fishes three chamber heart in amphibians here three and half chambers you can say which means so what are the upper chambers the auricles are well separated when it is coming to the ventricles so so the ventricles are not completely separated so in the diagrammatic representation if you see so the auricles the upper chambers are well separated the lower chambers if you see whatever the septum is there so the septum whatever the septum is there it is not completely separating this chamber to this chamber so still it is three chambered heart but sometimes what we can consider three and half chamber so lower chamber is not completely separated to so in such condition also you can find incomplete double circulation so we can say three chambered or three and half chambers but remember two auricles still the lower one is ventricle the chamber which is not completely separated here also the circulation is incomplete double 
circulation. But we can find always exceptional case in case of crocodiles. So here the exception thing is when you observe the crocodiles, the heart is having four chambers, four chambered heart. So in case of crocodiles, you can see the exceptional case. So very important you have to remember. So similarly like a limbless amphibian, here also the generally all the amphibians are sorry, all the reptiles are having three and half chambers. When it is coming to the crocodile, the complete formation of auricles and ventricles is there. So here, fourth chambered heart with the complete double circulation. So in detail, we will explain in the further classes what is complete double circulation, incomplete double circulation. Okay. Next, excretion. So here the excretory substance is uric acid. So generally, if you see reptiles, they take very less water. So the input of water into their bodies is compared to other organs very less. So to conserve water, they excrete less toxic substance, okay, which is uric acid. But some of the organisms still excrete some amount of urea. Here in class reptilia, so the majority of organisms excretion, if you see the excretory organs are kidneys as usual, no need to mention every time. So the excretion is happening, the organs are the kidneys and here the excretory substances, majority of organisms excrete uric acid. So, which is a white color pasty like substance, you can find, you can observe this uric acid pellets along uh, whenever you see that your lizards will be there. So, if you observe the excretory material of the lizard, so at the end of that, what are the pellets? There will be white color substance. You can see the white color substance, excretory pellets of the lizards. If you see, there will be white color pellet. That white color substance is nothing but uric acid only. Okay, so they excrete uric acid as a cheap nitrogenous waste material, and these are called uricotelic organisms. And the property is called uricotelism. So, previously, also a number of times we discussed these things uh, ammonotelic, ureotelic, uricotelic, all these things. So now the excretory system, previously we discussed the excretory, whatever the urinary tract, undigested food and reproductive tract, everything is opening into cloaca. Next, sensory organs, if you see the sensory organs, they are having well developed sensory organs, some are having even, infrared vision also is there, some of the snakes you can see. So, some of the organs, the tactile sense will be there, smell detection will be there. So sensory organs are well developed and with the 12 pairs of cranial nerves. So 12 pairs of cranial nerves. with well developed sensory organs. Next, reproduction. So previously as I mentioned, so these are having internal fertilization, successors separate, and the development is direct development. Sexual reproduction, sexes are separate, 
so you can see sexes are separate so male and female organisms are separate organisms so male gametes is produced by one organism and female gametes are produced by another organism here sexes are separate and the fertilization is internal fertilization fertilization is internal so here only one important thing you have to understand internal fertilization is here happening after that most of the organisms they will lay the eggs so when they are laying the eggs in such condition what we say ov parus so mostly ov parus but few organisms are there which are ovo vv parus that means inside the female organism only inside the female organism only the fertilized egg will develop so some of the organisms will give direct birth to the egg ones in the even reptiles also if we see best example python or some particularly vipers pythons and vipers if you see they give birth to the egg ones directly and most of the organisms they lay the fertilized eggs in the evolution first time if you see the egg is developing the shell egg is with the protective protective coat you can say here the shell is made so a little bit leathery appearance you can see you can uh, differentiate the whatever the reptile eggs and the birds eggs so the reptile eggs generally will be leathery appearance so whereas birds eggs if you see there will be hard shell will be there okay so in the evolution by the development of this uh, protective eggs which made them completely terrestrial if you see aquatic forms amphibians or fishes lack of this protective shell they have to go back to the water again in the case of amphibian amphibian in case of fishes you cannot find this shells so whatever the water body is there surrounding there only they have to go for the reproduction so because of this protective shell eggs will not become desiccate desiccate means drying here in case of reptiles eggs will not become desiccate and they are well protected next fertilization is internal oviparous and the next thing is development so development you can see direct in case of reptiles the development is direct development these are the characteristic what are the given in ncert textbook clearly you can next examples so there are lot of examples if you see there chameleon particularly tree lizard so which can change the colors turtles tortoise hemidactyle snakes there are lot of examples for the class reptilia so the few important one chameleon Hemidactylis, Hemidactylis is wall lizard. Chameleon is tree lizard. And next, Calo. garden lizard so there are lot of example if you see crocodilia so crocodiles you can see alligators snakes in that you can see cobra naja so commonly called cobra so pythons so many examples you can find for class 
area so yeah trade snake is there king cobra is there and one more important thing so these snake generally we consider them limbless reptiles remember similarly like limbless amphibian ichthyophis snake generally we consider them as limbless reptiles so this is about the class amphibia and reptilia later in next class we are going to complete the animal kingdom chapter so in next class we will discuss about class apes and class mammalia okay students please join in the doubt session